This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. Okay, this is where my metallurgical knowledge comes back into play. I know that copper can, in circumstances, circumstances be quite beneficial, particularly with cast iron. It's not particularly complementary when it comes to steel. With cast iron, it tends to refine the grain in the cast iron. In fact, I remember one of my old university lecturers telling me that when he worked in a foundry, they had, and uh, they were casting engine blocks for Rolls Royce because the old Chieftain tank used to have a Rolls Royce diesel engine in it, and they used to have a bit of copper in it to refine the grain because, well, Rolls Royce being Rolls Royce, their cast iron had to be a bit better than everybody else's. He didn't reckon it did much benefit but it was Rolls Royce so we all had a good laugh about that. However when it comes down to steel copper tends to migrate into the grain boundary and even worse than that if you've got a bit of steel with scale on it and you get copper in on that piece of steel the copper will run underneath the scale and it will go between the scale and the steel and it will penetrate into the grain boundaries and cause what's called hot shortness. So if you now then subsequently come and try and forge it, the grain boundaries infiltrated with copper become very weak. So if you try to forge it out at high temperature, they, they break and it, it's, it's not good for, for forging process. And in fact, I can show you an example. Here's a piece here. Now this is a piece of cumai I made. So there's three laminates of steel in there and two layers of cumai, uh, copper either side of the core structure. So it's hard core, I think it's, it's a random Damascus on the outside and layers of copper so that when we make a knife out of it, you've got a nice black core, you've got a nice line of copper and you've got some nice random Damascus on the outside. But being a bit, as you can see, I'm, I'm not the spring chicken and sometimes I forget things. So I had to do a final roll out on this and I forgot it was a piece of cumai and I overheated it. I heated it above the melting point of copper. Now copper melts at, I think it's 1083, something around there. It melts at that temperature. And I heated it up in my normal forge, it went up 11 or 1200 degrees. And afterwards, I found out there's a problem. You may be able to see this, but what happens is the liquid copper melted out of the edge here. Now some people say weld the edge up so the copper can't get out, but I don't believe in melting it in the first place because that's wrong. The copper got out there, it came round and it scooted all the way under this scale. And when I've ground it off there, you can see a little line of copper running between the scale and the metal. Now all that scale there will have a layer of copper under it. That copper will be infiltrating into the grain boundary. Try to make a knife out of that. It may not be the best piece of material in the world. So if you're making cumai, you don't melt the copper. You know, you hear people saying, oh, weld up around the edges and then if you melt the copper, it doesn't matter. Well, first of all, I doubt that anybody well, not many people are going to weld up the edge. Bearing in mind you're now getting copper going into your liquid weld metal and get a good seal all around the edge. And secondly, if you've got liquid copper, it's still going into the grain boundaries between your cladding and your core. And that, again, isn't a good idea in my mind. So therefore, the plan is you don't melt the copper. That means keeping your forging temperatures to about 1,000 degrees and accurately keeping them to about 1,000 degrees not working off Mark 1 eyeball and looking at the colour in your forge and hoping it's not going above a thousand degrees. I'm talking about measuring it or using say an electric furnace which is what we tend to do here, controlling it so you know it's not going above a thousand degrees because the furnace is running at a thousand degrees. You just don't go up there and melt it and it will forge together very very much slower. Um, I've heard people say that you can't, that your core has got to be a single layer because you can't forge weld at a thousand degrees. That's not strictly true. Solid phase welding as I explained earlier, will start to happen at roughly 50% of the melting temperature. So if your steel melts at 1300 degrees, you start to get up to 750, 800 degrees, it will start to fuse together. Very, very slow and you need a lot of pressure, but it can work. I found that, you, you know, working at 1000 degrees, you, you can forge weld together, not easily, but slowly and it takes a long time. So if you do want to buy a piece of cumai, don't bellyache if I want a lot of money off you. It's not cheap because it takes a lot of time. But you do have to be careful with it. Do not melt the copper. The last thing you want is melted copper anywhere near a piece of steel.